Here we are at the Radisson Blue in Jersey. So fantastic and delighted to be interviewing James Matheson all about fine art, digital art, and that journey. As we've transitioned from Web 1, which was the early internet of brochureware, yeah. to Web 2, things like e-commerce and social, to Web 3, blockchain, metaverse, we're seeing in increased investment in those technologies. So we already manage $25 million worth of art okay. on behalf of the artists we represent, mm -hmm. and we represent our artists globally and exclusively. Yeah. That will grow as we build out our platform. So the next phase for Superlux uh, is to build out our own mm -hmm. ecosystem of technology to support our artists and their works and our collectors and our clients and bring those two communities together. Educate and Learn is an amazing interview. Please watch. I am so delighted to be here with James Matthewson, CEO and founder of Superlux, and we're going to be discussing everything to do with fine art and digital. James, welcome. Thank you very much, Paul. Good morning. Educate us or tell me more about digital art. Yeah. And I'm reading a lot now about people can register or put their art on the blockchain. That's right. So just explain what it is. Like many industries, digital has found its way into that industry and adoption has been, in, in some cases, slower, in other cases, much more aggressive. And art, I suspect, is really on the, on the former end of that spectrum with slow adoption. And simply what we're doing is we're helping collectors and, and investors, uh, artists, to digitalize their, their offering. And that in simple terms means on a physical piece of art, yeah. we have a DNA tag mm -hmm. that is registered to a record on the blockchain. So it's what we refer, refer to as a public ledger, okay. to be seen by anybody. And that helps to ensure there's provenance, but also ensures there's, there's trust in the transaction that the client buying that piece of physical art knows it's an original, knows it's one of one or one of 10 or one of 100 and um, that, that provenance and that trust provides some security and assurity. So I can imagine in the future, if all art was on the blockchain, or is it, yes. what's it going to be called? On the register? Register. I think people understand that some of the language in, in Web3, if, yeah. we, if we encompass yeah. digital art in the wider frame of Web3, some of the language in Web3 is quite complex and uh, inaccessible, particularly to people who have operated in the traditional space for a long time. I think time. it needs to be kept simple, like most things in right. life. I think the best ideas are the simplest. So that's right. So that's, I've yeah. spent 20, 30 years of my life in digital marketing, yeah. starting out in the mid 90s in an industry that nobody knew or understood and had very little adoption and went through that whole cycle of educating the market and demystifying it and removing that language barrier. Yeah. And I think art is going through the same journey. I think you see in a lot of industries as well. I mean, I, I think Sweden is an example, all title deeds for properties are registered on a register or on the blockchain. Yes. And you can purchase a property within a week. Yes. Because you press a button, Yes. there it is, it's owned by you, you're yep. legally allowed to sell it, you're the buyer, press a button and it yep. gets transferred from A to B and the money goes from B to A. Yes, and, and, and the idea really of, of blockchain is to simplify a transaction and make it more transparent. So you've got, you've got speed, it can happen immediately, and you've got transparency, which in the art world has been often not the case because yeah, no. art tra trades in, in, in very clandestine ways sometimes. And that may be part of the resistance in the traditional art market but is also, that they quite yeah. like that <clears throat> clandestine I mean, modus I'm, operandi. I mean, I'm 53 years young. Not a and, day over 21, surely. And I think as you get older, the reluctance to change, or if you don't understand something, yes, or you don't appreciate the benefits, right, you probably won't take it on board. So when I've been to a lot of galleries, so you know, like you were in Miami recently, and, and most of those people tend to be maturer people, mm. don't always understand or see the benefits. And I think that's the key thing is you've got to, what is the benefit of me putting all my art onto a digital platform? Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's, uh, in, in some cases, there's a lack of understanding. There's a little bit of fear. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a bit of an unknown. 
because it's new and people don't always like change. So for, for me, the underlying benefit is that it creates an indisputable record of that piece of art. And it can't be changed, can it? It can't be changed. So what can happen is if a piece of art is traded, so if I sell my art to you, the ledger, the blockchain record can be updated yeah. and a new certificate can be issued. And who would do that? So we, we have a technology partner. So okay. what we've built at Superlux and Partners is a technology ecosystem to underpin digital and physical art. And I want to be really clear that this is physical, yeah. the kind of thing you frame and put on your wall, yeah. as much as it is an NFT, a non-fungible token that can sit in your wallet on your phone or on your TV screen at so home. What's the NFT thing? Because that's new to me as well. Okay, so <laughs> NFTs have come through an interesting journey with a lot of hype in the in the sort of early part of this decade, in the early sort of you know, 2020, 2021, with Board Ape Yacht Club and, and art in an NFT format, a non-fungible token. So it just means a digital version. Right. Selling at Of the tens. real thing. Well, in this case, something like Board Ape Yacht Club yeah. was only digital, so it only existed as a digital file. So it's like having, so it is a digital file held in the cloud or wherever yep. that you could own, yep. and that's a non-fungible token. That's a non-fungible token. Why is it called a non-fungible token? Well, because I mean, anything that's fungible is physical, a physical asset, and anything that's non-fungible is a digital asset. Okay, so non-fungible is the Art Club then, yep. and the Ape. Yeah, so these these are bought and sold on a digital platform. Um, you've got you've got sites like Super Rare and Rareable, many many what they would call a exchange or a platform, and those those non fungible tokens, those NFTs can be traded. They can be bought and sold at, at whatever price that the market is, determines, and that is one category of art so okay. that's digital it's sitting yeah. in the digital space and then of course we've got physical art okay and both uh, uh, types can be blockchain registered blockchain secured and um, blockchain certified so okay. with a nft you have what's called a smart contract yeah and the smart contract determines any conditions or benefits or what we call utility so the smart contract is that, that art. the contract of sale or not is that well different? it's a, it, yes it, it, in essence if i've got a piece of it, art and i come to you and say james can i register it yeah what happens what's that process and well, so it, you, if it's a physical piece of art yeah physical piece i take my painting off the yeah. wall at home so oh, what, it registered. what we would do is we would create a digital representation of that physical piece of art that would yeah. be registered on our platform called Tag Smart. Yeah. We would issue what we call a DNA tag. Yeah. And that's a physical. So that's the provenance sticker. piece. So we so so we know that it's mine. It's real. Yep. Belongs to me. Yep. And that's and the that, DNA that piece. sticker, which is a tamper-proof tag, mm -hmm. is applied to the art is registered and matched to a blockchain certificate or a I'm blockchain record. Yeah, yeah. And what you have now as the owner is you have a record on the internet, on the blockchain, that confirms that that piece of art is yours. It's, um, it, and if you transact that piece of art, yeah. you can update that blockchain record with the new owner wow. information and a new certificate is issued. And so you're in the process of approaching artists, collectors and individuals to place their art on the register or what, yeah. what's the plan? So, so we already manage $25 million worth of art okay. on behalf of um, the artists we represent mm -hmm. and we represent our artists globally and exclusively. Yeah. That will grow as we build out our platform. So the next phase for Superlux uh, is to build out our own mm -hmm. ecosystem of technology to support our artists and their works and our collectors and our clients and bring those two communities together in a way that makes it feel very accessible and very easy and not complex and technical. And that's been the big downfall to date of this evolution into Web3 from Web2. You think Web2 is just things like e-commerce and social media. Web3 is blockchain, crypto, 
um, decentralized finance, those sorts of things. People get a bit scared about that. So what we're doing is we're trying to take some of that complexity away and just make it feel very much like a normal digital experience. And everybody's used to shopping on Amazon. Yeah. Why can't you come to my platform and in any currency buy a piece of art and make it very, very simple. I think that's very clever and I think it's very logical. I think with everything that's new, it just takes time. It takes time. A lot of education. So one of the things we, we, we want to do this year is we want to take our, our tour bus on the road and go around maybe UK initially and extend to Europe and go into universities, go into galleries, go into museums and run little educational workshops about digital art and physical art and how this is all evolving. I think for me, if you wanted to do it quickly, then you would do what we're doing today and that's create a video program of like a course piece and then you can then share that with all the, the gallery direct say this is what we're doing this is we can help you these are the benefits to reach more faster but yep. sometimes people like to meet face to face it's easier they do but in the social world as you know the attention that people have yeah it's fleeting it is but if you're doing targeted as you well know yourself you know targeted marketing is probably the best but yeah when you're educating and bringing in new things, yeah, you always have that resistance, don't you? Yeah, there's, there's resistance and, and, and that's fine. And it won't be for everybody. There are collectors out there. There are younger crypto savvy art collectors who get it. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to deliver a proposition that appeals to that younger crypto savvy digital art collector but also at the same time bring in that traditional market and make it feel very accessible to them and not scary. And when you talk to people about, come onto my, my platform, connect your wallet, make sure you've got, you know, Matic in your wallet already, and then you could, people so go- what's Matic? Matic's just a cryptocurrency, it's okay. Polygon okay. Matic. You know, you've got Bitcoin, everybody okay. is familiar with, and yeah. Ethereum. So you, your wallet Solana. is your bank account? Yeah, your wallet is, your, is, is where Bitcoin. you keep your cash, if yeah, you like, yeah, but it's you. in a digital format. Yeah, I'm with you. And um, what we're trying to do is remove some of that language. So for a client who isn't crypto savvy, talking to them about wallets and connecting to an exchange feels complicated. And no, agreed. I think for me, it'd be you, know, you connect your wallet, which is like your bank account. You have money on there, which is whichever coin it is that you have to trade. And then you buy and sell your art. I yep. mean, it's exactly. keeping it as simple as Keep possible. Keep it simple, yeah. I think terminology and things, when people start saying crypto, people think of risk and fraud with that, you know, that chat recently and others. It's removing risk and fear for, for a lot of people, making it feel very normal. And the benefits would be provenance is the biggest one I can think of. Provenance is, is, is the ultimate benefit. So the provenance gives you that reassurance that you've got the one of one or the one of 10 or the one yeah. of 100. Yeah. But also the fact that it exists in an indisputable digital record. I like that. Provides security as well. And those are, I think, the USPs for digital art is that it's, it's you know, it's, it's, there's, no, there's no counterfeiting. No. You, know, you can't replicate it. No, and if you do right replicate there. it, it doesn't have the requisite you just want three things, don't you? Most humans can only take on board three things. You know, and if it's going to be provenance, ease of transacting, yeah. what would be the third? Portability is another big one. So ease so of transactions, so portability? Portability is, is, is a big upside in the digital art space because I can have my art in a wallet, mm -hmm. but I might be a multi-homeowner. If I'm, if I'm a wealthy individual, and I like my art, and I, but I can't transport my art to each of my properties when I'm spending time yeah, there. Yeah. Well, with my wallet, I can connect it to a screen on my wall of my home in Monaco, and my art is there. And I then travel from Monaco to so New York, have, and I've got my art there with me. So you'd have TV screens showing your art? Yes. I'm with you. So we, we, have, um, we have devices called um, The Frame. They're made by Samsung. Okay. They're a matte finish screen but they look like a piece of art on the wall. But you can display any piece of art if it's on in your screen. wallet. Exactly. To see that TV. Right, let's go to Monaco today, or I'm on my super yacht. 
oh, let's, I want to look at my Picasso today, or whatever the piece of art is. Exactly. Just pressing a button yeah. and physically seeing that art yeah. would look very real, yeah. I'd imagine. It looks very real, it looks very real. And resolution, you know, what you know, the, the, the quality of the image yeah. is, is no longer an issue, and that just gets better and better and better. So what wow. you have is you have that provenance, you have that security, you have that portability, and also, art is still probably the best performing alternative asset investment class. For me, it's, it's, it's a, such a shame when people put art into secure storage and it never sees the light of day. And I get that's an investment model. For some people, it's security, yeah. risk, yeah. and people get very cautious, I think. Yeah. If you've got art that's worth 50 million, 100 million, why have it on the wall and the risk of losing it? Fire or theft, and yeah. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I've never even thought about having TV screens like the frame of a Samsung to then display it. That's very clever. Yeah. yeah. Never even thought of that. And it, 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 that, that portable element means whether you're at a dinner party and you show somebody your art on your phone, or you have it on the screen of your apartment in New York, it, it creates that opportunity to see it rather than it's only in one location. To see your art, yeah, and then you could have it probably mirrored, I'd imagine, wouldn't you, on your TVs? You have to simplify this, but essentially you can connect your crypto wallet. Yeah. So let's say you have a wallet like MetaMask. Yeah. You have your NFTs in MetaMask. You yeah. just connect your wallet to your Samsung frame TV yeah. screen, yeah. and it displays your NFTs. Incredible. And that's not new technology, but it's very, it's it's very early in its adoption. Yeah, it's joining all the dots and actually using it that people can experience. Yes. I mean, if you know, we recently had the benefit of seeing that art flat, for example, and now I'm thinking with that art flat, yeah. you could have an art flat in Jersey, which is a pure digital experience. Yes, yes. That's something to it's explore. Possibly in the planning. Well, we'll watch this space. I mean, I think <laughs> it um, would be quite an incredible experience, both, both for for everyone, I think if you're a younger viewer and you understand it and you, you, you play with crypto, use crypto, it's just an extension of your life to have your art stored that way. And then if you've got a fine art collection and you want to have the provenance and the register and then the benefits of it being digitalized mm. to physically see it, I think that's exciting. Yeah. Because then that's a service that you can provide to say, hey, would you like to sit somewhere and admire your art and appreciate it on your iPad or your phone and, and, and look at it a different way, huh? Yeah, abs absolutely. TV screens or, or digital displays, whatever format they take, gives people access then to their art collection wherever they are. So James, that's absolutely fascinating to cover a subject that I've never really thought about too much and give me some incredible ideas. And I'm really looking forward to what you're going to create with this and you have to let us know when you're live yes with something physical yeah that's digital yes because i think coming back and for viewers that are watching i think they'd love to come and visit you in jersey see a physical digital type experience yep i think they're kind of amazing and i'm all now thinking i'm just top of my head here vr technology you could probably sit with the vr i mean i'm thinking of the new apple device as well you could yeah. probably sit here and see the art in the headset and just flick. Yes. So I've not done that yet. There's a, a term called metaverse. Right. So one of the elements of our ecosystem that we'll be building out is the, uh, is, is the Superlux uh, metaverse, which is essentially a digital gallery. You can come in and, and browse around, meet the artists, see lots of different art, buy and sell art. And does those exist right now? They do, and they are, again, very much in their infancy, but they're coming and they're growing. And brands, big brands, global brands, are all investing in this kind of Web3 journey as we've transitioned from Web1, which was the early internet of brochureware, yeah. to Web2, things like e-commerce and social, to Web3, blockchain, metaverse. We're seeing in increased investment in those technologies. Wow, this is so super exciting, A, to learn, be to understand more. And for those of you that want to reach out to James and take some action, in the description below will be the website. James, thank you so, so much. Pleasure. For those of you that want to re reach out and connect, please do. And always, please like and subscribe.